is everyone? It's a rainy day here in Utah. You can tell I've been in the army. This is this stuff's old, man. This this and my Gore-Tex, 20 years old. <laughs> I'm so old. I, well, actually not 20, like 19. I got it all in 2005. No, 2004. It got issued. Yeah, 05. I got issued when I got deployed. So I figured. It's raining a little bit, but it's not bad. So I figured, um, some folks asked me to do a video on uh, bulk tanker operations uh, and delivering, you know, flour, stuff like that, and, and possibly how to do it. I gotta back up a little bit here. So it's not hard. Um, there's just a bunch of levers, and it can be sort of daunting, kinda. So, Let's do it. Hopefully my phone doesn't get too wet. Um, we're going to get out of here. Uh, so, first off, this is your hot hose. It gets hot. Don't touch it. <laughs> Unless you have gloves on. It gets really hot. But we'll connect that in a minute. This valve is the blowdown valve. It's going to release pressure from the trailer when you need to. This means it's closed. If all these are perpendicular, then it means they're closed. If they're in line with the actual, uh, what's that noise? If they're in line with the actual flow, then they're open. But perpendicular means closed. You want the blowdown closed at least at the beginning. This is your top air. I don't really have to use it very much. Um, and all that does is if you open it while it's running, it runs air up to the top of the trailer and it can push the flower down or whatever else you're delivering. This is line air. You never want this closed unless you get plugged up. I'll do a video on that later. You always want that open. This is the uh, aeration valve. Right now I want it closed, but what that does is send air down to all the bottom levers which is the bottom where you open those up and the product comes out. So you'll see. Remember, perpendicular means closed. And whatever the word is for in line. I don't remember. <laughs> I got my wash ticket in here. A lot of places are going to ask for it. Some don't. Some don't really care. Um, I don't really look at different ones very much. There's line pressure and tank pressure. Tank pressure, you never want over 15. Because if you get over 15, you could risk blowing the tank up, which is not a good thing. Um, line pressure is how much pressure you're pumping the flower out at. Typically, you want it around 10. That's where most places want it. I might have to move my truck. We'll find out. But once they've checked your seals and everything, you can take them off. Most of our seals just pop right off. You're going to take this is where... Your product hose comes out. This is where the actual flower flows through. It's a big blue one. Sometimes they're green, sometimes they're clear, sometimes they're silver, you know. This is where the actual flower comes out. It's that bottom line I showed you earlier. I'm not gonna open it yet. And then we're gonna connect it all to this. It goes up and into the building. I can't get in there to see the silo. But, you know, that's typically, everywhere is almost the same. Almost everywhere is the same. So, what we have to do, open this up, and I have a filter and my beating stick. You want the filter, because it filters the flour. You don't want any random crap getting into the silos. So, you know, you use the filter. I gotta put it on, I gotta put the phone away to do that. Guess I'll just have to edit this video. All right, we got all my lines connected. So you can see, product hose comes out that bottom. Remember that came out of, right there. Product hose comes out of the bottom, and it gets connected to the silo with your filter. Now the filter can go on the other end of this line too, but I always put it on the silo end. So you connect that, then connect your product hose. That way you're covered. And 
and I have some stands to put that hose on too to keep it off the ground. A lot of places require that. You're hauling food service stuff. <clears throat> so, here I told you about the hot hose. Hot hose is now connected to the PTO and then it runs up to the trailer and that's where we're all gonna start. So the PTO runs pressure, air pressure, all through the trailer. And to turn it on, you gotta get in the truck. Get in the truck. And if you see this PTO button right here, turn that on. And I should see a PTO pop up on the dash here. PTO. I don't know if you can see that or not. And then I just gotta run my RPMs up a little bit. Probably to about 11. You can hear it. Now what we're gonna do is wait and build pressure. It's a little loud. You gotta make sure I'm not leaking any air anywhere. So while I'm building pressure, I kind of walk and listen. You'll hear it if you're leaking air. It will be kind of loud. But no, we're good. And we're building pressure. And you're not gonna build pressure if you're, and this is the aeration, not line, I got it wrong. This is the aeration, this is line air. If your line air is open, you're not gonna build pressure. We'll open it later. If your blowdown's open, you're not gonna build pressure. Cause listen, that's all the air that's in the tank. Right now we don't want to touch that. <clears throat> Once I get up to about five to seven pounds of pressure, I can start pumping. You can see it's at about that right now. It doesn't take long at all. So what we'll do is open our line here. I usually open it about halfway. And you can hear the air flowing. Your first hopper's valve, open that slowly. You can actually feel the flower start to move. It's gonna go all the way down this to the end of the trailer. As soon as you open that first hopper product valve, you need to walk to the back. What I'm doing is looking. I don't know if you can see it, but the, the, the product line is actually gonna move a little bit. It means flowers going through it. It's moving. I got no leaks. If it's leaking, it'll look like a cloud, you know, coming out. It'll, you'll know. It, you'll know if it's leaking. No leak there. No leak here. So for now, we're good. Just want to keep an eye on the pressure. The good thing about this place is where I'm delivering at right now, I don't really have to like screw around with the pressure on the trailer very much. It kind of just pumps at like 10 to 11. And there's no annoying in-between process between us delivering the flour and it getting into their silo. Their silo is right there. It's just a big bag and it just dumps it into it. Some places have like a sifter or like another separate filter that makes it take a long time. This place I can, I can deliver in about 45 minutes here. Uh, my next load after this one takes like two, two and a half hours. But 45 minutes is quick for a 50,000 pound load, you know? So really, that's it. That's the hardest part, is getting it started. Remember, whenever you start, blow down closed, line air closed, aeration open, and your line air needs to be closed to build pressure. Once you feel pressure, you open your line air up, and then you can open your hopper valve up, and you start delivering. I'll come back to you when that first hopper empties out. You'll hear it. It'll start making like a woo. <laughs> it's a funny noise, but you'll hear it when it empties out. And that way, you know, there's air. There's just air flowing. There's no flower. Uh, and once that happens, you just close that valve and open the other one. It's simple. It's super simple. You do that four times and then you're clean. But uh, once that hopper empties out, I'll, uh, I'll come back. All right, folks. I know it's loud. So I got my beat stick, and we're gonna beat some stuff. I know it's getting close to being empty. So what you gotta do is make sure all the flour falls from the side and down into the bottom. So to do that, you do this. Woo! You can't 
don't hit it too hard, you'll dent it. But it's empty for now. You can hear it. Sounds like Godzilla is very angry. <laughs> so that's empty for now. Close it. And now there's no more air flowing through there. So when I start this next one throughout the process, flour's going to fall from that next hopper down into this one. So you'll have to kind of work backwards at the end. It's easy though. So now we're going to open the second hopper. I feel the flower going. Walk back here again. Make sure it's flowing and that my product line is jiggling a little bit. And it's all good. Now here's something else that so you remember I said a leak? This came a little loose. So, since that came loose, I've leaked a little flower. I'll have to clean it up. I left it like that so you'd see it. Since that happened, which is not normal, it doesn't normally come loose like that, but sometimes it can happen. What we're gonna do, we're gonna strap those dog ears down. A lot of people just do it automatically. And I guess I should too, I just don't. Because it's very, very rare to have a leak. And I do mean very rare. Hold on, I gotta... Oh, now the strap's on there, I had to use two hands. But once you strap it up, those ears won't come loose. It's possible I didn't put them on all the way. But, you know, it can shake free. But yeah, that's it. I'm on my second hopper now. And then I'll do the third one, and then the fourth one. And I don't think I need to show it. But once that fourth one empties out, you're gonna have a little bit of flour in the bottom of each hopper because it slid out. So once that last one is empty, close it off. And you need to make sure that you're hitting with your mallet each uh, hopper throughout the process to get the flour to go down. But once that last one's empty, you just kind of work your way backwards again and they'll empty out again but this time it'll happen in like five minutes as opposed to like 15 to 20. and then you're done you close everything up once you're done and empty you'll open up your line air all the way all the way which means completely perpendicular remember so down and then you open up the blow down all the way to release all that air pressure. Because if you don't do that, you need to open the blow down to release all the air pressure. And once all the pressure is gone, then you can open up your product line and everything and, and take everything apart. If you try to open up that stuff without opening up the blow down and releasing the air pressure, you're gonna have a bad day. Something's gonna pop off and that line air can pop off and hit you in the shin, it will break your leg. I'm not even kidding. So you have to be careful to make sure that you release the air pressure. If you don't do that, you can screw yourself up bad. We don't do this, but if you ever had to get up on top of the trailer and <clears throat> tighten up one of the top valve, not valve, but uh, hatches, you might have to do that one day. But if you don't release that air pressure when you do that, that's gonna come off and it will create, it'll shatter your face. There was a guy that worked here apparently that had that happen. But yeah, you know, it's easy. It's an easy job. Just monitor your air pressure. Don't let it get over 15 pounds in the tank. And whew, some places are gonna have a requirement for how much pressure you pump out at in the line pressure. I ding my hand, I got a boo-boo. But, uh, yeah, I mean, there's not a lot to remember. All those levers can be intimidating at first. <clears throat> but once you kind of figure out how air actually flows, you'll know what to do. I'll do another video on um, what happens, what to do once you plug up. And what that means is, say you pump flour too fast, or maybe it had moisture in it, it can get sticky. Uh, you know, every once in a while, you might plug up. The flour will stop flowing and it's gonna pack into that product line and probably gonna pack into that line that runs into the silo too. It's annoying. It's rare with me because I try to keep it flowing really consistently, but it happens. 
and uh, you'll have to actually create a vacuum with the trailer. Yes, you can do that. And you'll actually suck that flour out and back into the tanks in order to keep, in order to start going again. I'll do a video on that. It's very, very simple. Very, very simple. Um, you just have to act fast so you don't, you know, build too much pressure too fast. But uh, yeah, that's how you run bulk tanker. Right now I'm delivering flour. We also deliver corn. When I deliver corn, that's when I use my top air. I have to open the top air just a little in order to get some air on top of that corn so that it actually goes down into the uh, the product line. Because if you don't, corn's, you know, corn's thick, it's corn kernels. It can actually get to the bottom of the hopper and just sit there. So you gotta push it down. Um, and we deliver salt, uh, I think barley, maybe, wheat grain, I'm not sure. I, I, have, I know there's bran, um, but yeah. Essentially, it all works the same. You can haul like pot ash, cement, sand, all kinds of plastic. We haul plastic, like uh, medical grade plastic, um, salt, stuff like that. I mean, it's, it's, everything works the same. The trailer works the same. Um, yeah, that's it. That's bulk tanker operations. You know, you know if, if I need to make a more detailed video, let me know. I don't know. But that, it's simple. It's simple, just like that. Y'all have a good one.